chickadees. I'm back. My lovelies. Again. Because you know my Monday routine. Okay. So, I thought that this video, I wanted to do something a little bit different. And I thought that maybe I would do a vid on dispelling some beauty myths. Some things that, you know, our moms told us, our grandmas told us, or, you know, in high school you learned, or in middle school, or whatever it is, the, you know, these rumors that aren't true that kind of get drilled into our heads. And um, some of them really bug me, and some of them are just, oh, kind of moments. So, I thought that that would be a good video, dispelling some beauty myths. So I have, I have some of them written down just so I don't forget, but I probably don't think I'm going to need them because these are like, a lot of these things are the bane of my existence and they're kind of drilled into my melon. So, okay. Ice tea's kicking in. Okay. The first one is you cannot change the size of your pores. You cannot shrink your pores. Pores, unfortunately, or fortunately, if you've got good genetics, are indeed genetic. Um, they are what they are. You are born with the predisposition for larger pores or smaller pores from your mommy or your daddy or your Grammy. And they are what they are. There are products out there that will help minimize them temporarily, make them appear smaller, appear not change them, appear smaller, and can like cover them up, fill them a little primers. There are a lot of good primers out there that do that, but you cannot change the size of your pores, unfortunately, because I genetically have kind of large pores. I mean, not ginormous, but look, there I go again. Stick them my face, in your face. I don't know if you can say, but I tend to have a little bit of larger pores kind of right here. And I hate them, but my mom has them too, and it is what it is. So, beauty myth number one is you can't change your, your pores, but you can use products to minimize the appearance of them. Okay, um, number two, and this one really gets me. Mascara. You will not get, I didn't bring a mascara down here, and I wish I did, but you will not get more mascara on your wind, wand, wind, if you pump, pump it, pump it, pump it, pump it, pump it. You know, do you ever see people that, and then, you know, actually what you're doing when you do that, and I know a lot of people know this, but I'm passing it on anyway. What you're doing is you are adding air bubbles. You're shoving air into your tube when you do that. You're drying out your mascara. You're making it work um, in a compromised way, it's not going to work as well. It's going to dry up quicker, so it's going to have a, 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 a smaller, shorter shelf life. So don't do it. You're not getting any more product on your wand, and you're screwing up your mascara. So don't do it. If you do want it, twist it inside of the um, tube, and you'll get extra product. And just, you know, go in and do a couple coats if you want. Not too many, because you don't want to look like a raccoon. I hate those clumpy... Well, or whatever. I digress. Okay, so this beauty myth number two, don't pump your mascara. You will not get more product on your wand that way. All right. Beauty myth number three. Um, plucking gray hair. I have a lot of gray hair, ladies and gentlemen. I know. Shocking. I have a lot of gray hair. I have to color my hair every four weeks, uh, cause, especially because it's really dark. That gray just screams at you. So, um, I don't know why I told you that other than because I have experience in trying to mask my gray hair, whether it be like if I need a root touch up with, sometimes I'll take mascara and it's not, not normal. But, um, don't pluck your gray hair because it will grow back. It will not grow back 10 more. I think that's the rumor or the myth. You pick, pluck one gray hair and 10 will grow back. No, a follicle is a follicle is a follicle. Your one gray hair will grow back. Not more, not less, but the problem with it, if you wanna pluck it, is one, 
you're losing hair if you keep pulling it out of your head. But the more important thing is that it will grow back and it will be like a short baby hair and it will eh, stick right up. Or even especially, you know, like right here when you have them and they, you may pluck them, it's okay. You will not get any more, but I would recommend that you don't strictly because it will probably be more obvious growing back. So color it with a little mascara on if you want, you know, if you're not ready to commit to coloring your hair, but um, if you wanna pluck it, that's okay. Don't be concerned that, you know, 10 more are gonna come back with it. That is a myth, myth a doodle. All right, next, in that same vein, waxing your lips, under, not your lips, your uh, upper lip, the hair on your upper lip, or for that matter, your eyebrows. Another urban myth is if you, I don't know if that's an urban myth. Urban myth is like when the kid ate the Pop Rocks, Pop Rocks, remember, and drank Coke and blew up or something. That's an urban myth. This is a beauty myth. So another beauty myth is that if you wax or shave your upper lip or your eyebrows, that they're going to go back fuller and thicker and bushier over your lip. No. Again, same concept as in the head, in your head. It will not. Follicle is a follicle is a follicle. So, um, it appears to look like it might be growing back thicker when it is growing back because of the way um, that the hair shaft is direction that the hair is growing. It's kind of an optical illusion for lack of a better explanation. So it, 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 it'll appear that it's growing back thicker um, or heavier, but it's not. So feel free to wax or shave or pluck or whatever. Put, you know, by the way, I know a lot of women who in between waxing will, you know, touch up with a razor. And I think that's perfectly fine. Honestly, the only difference is with waxing, you're ripping out from the root. And, you know, shaving, it really just takes um, the surface hair off. You know, you're not, you're not pulling it out. So it'll grow back more quickly, obviously, if you're using a razor. So same holds true if, if you use like a little eyebrow razor. But not, not, no more are going to grow back. Don't worry about it. Pluck, shave, wax, whatever you want to do. It's okay. All right. Do, do, do. What else did I want to talk about? Oh, urban myth. Not urban myth. Why do I keep saying that? Beauty myth. The best place to test foundation is on your wrist. Eh, no. Actually, your wrist is like the lightest skin on your body. That's not a good match. When you're testing your foundation to see if it's the right shade, right on your jawline. Put it on your jawline, let it sit, wander around Sephora or Macy's or Nordstrom or wherever you are. Then go back and look at it after it's settled a little bit and see if it becomes invisible on your jawline. And if it is, there's your shade. Don't test it. It's going to be much too light on your face. Okay. Um, what else did I want to talk to you guys about? I'm never at a loss for words, but I am right now. Oh, beauty myth. And this one, ladies and gentlemen, I will leave you with a true one. Using your cell phone against your face will cause you to break out. Yes, indeedy, it will. It's a breeding ground for bacteria. Um, you know, you're holding the phone against your face. You might have makeup on. Your, you know, a little dirt on your skin, whatever. It goes back in your case or your bag. You pick it up again. It, stick it back on your face. If you don't clean your phone, you really could very well get some breakouts over here from it. So clean your phone. Um, you know, use a little antibacterial wipe and you'll be happy. Okay, I think that's all I have. I mean, I, I have a lot of them. There are a million little beauty myths that I can dispel. But those are the ones that I thought I would share with you today. Um, if you have any requests or you have anything that you'd like me to talk about or tutorials, anything, please let me know because I enjoy that. And thank you so much for reading and commenting. You know I love my comments and subscribing. And you really, guys, I love you all. And you know that very, very much. And um, have a great day. And I'm going to have a good day. And hopefully I'll see you this week. I promise. I will. Mwah. See you later. Bye.